Hello, welcome back for another lecture. Uh, this will be our first uh, thermodynamic uh, review. For this will be a review for chapter one. Uh, what I'm going to do in this uh, uh, session, I'm just going to go ahead and review a few examples on chapter one, which is basically pressure and temperature. Let's start out with this example. We have this uh, piston and a gas uh, contained here. We'd like to find out what the pressure of the gas is in this piston. What happened if you have a spring pressure uh, from the spring of 150 Newton and uh, pushing on a gas, and then we have the plate and the area is given a 35 uh, centimeter uh, square. The mass of the plate is given as uh, 3.2 kilogram and uh, the local atmosphere pressure is about almost one bar, it's almost close to it, 95 kilopascal, and we'd like to know what the pressure of the gas inside of the uh, piston is. So one of the first thing you do, you draw the free body diagram. If I'm going to bring this plate right here, and I draw right here, and then I'm going to go ahead and put all the forces in there. Remember one thing about the difference between pressure and force. We said pressure is equal force divided by area, and therefore force is equal pressure times area. That's very really important to remember that. So now when we're going to come in here, do a free body diagram, I'm going to start from the top and go to the bottom. First, I got the pressure of the spring pushing down on the plate. So I got the spring pushing down on the plate. And then I got the pressure from the atmosphere pressure, which is all around us. So that's the basically uniform load of the, this uniformly distributed load pressure from the atmosphere on top of the plate. So that's the top. And the bottom, we have the weight of the plate itself, which is equal m times g for if we convert into a force. And then we have the gas pressure holding things back, which is a uniform. We call that P. So let's find out how we're going to calculate P. Well, it's easy because we are in equilibrium. Top and bottom are equal, or summation all forces comes out to zero. Which way you look at it, it's the same way. You can say summation of all the forces in y direction is equal to zero because we don't have any forces in horizontal direction. So I'm going to just go ahead and say summation of all the forces equals zero. We could do it this way, or we just go ahead and add everything up. So if I'm going this way, kind of a little bit easier, it makes it a uh, direction uh, kind of cleared out. I got a spring, so I got a minus FF spring called SP, and then I got minus, I can't write down P, but I got to convert this to a force. To convert this to a force because of the area right here, I got to multiply by the cross-sectional area, which in this case is given to us. So I'm going to say, okay, P atmosphere time area. All right. And then now I'm going to go on the bottom and I have minus the uh, force, which is at mg, force of the uh, weight of the plate. Then I got the pressure from the uh, uh, gas itself, which is going to be going up. That's a plus plus P time A. Now remember, these are force, all of them are forces. So let's go ahead and isolate it, basically simple, uh, uh, simple mathematical equation. I'm going to say P A is equal, put everything on the other side so they're all going to become positive, F S spring uh -huh, plus M G and plus P of atmosphere time area. So if I divide everything by the area, Give, because I'm interested in the P right here. So I'm going to get rid of the A, divide everybody by A. I'm going to this become P and FS spring plus MG, both going to be divided by A. My marker is dying, so let's switch color. And then plus, when I divide this by A, it's just P atmosphere. Okay. And just go ahead, plug in number. So P is equal. I have uh, FS spring is 150 Newton plus MG, M was 3.2 kilogram time 9.8 meter per second. Um, we said, the should have said here, G is a constant anyways, 9.8 meter per second always. <coughs> so now we have this, oh, divided by the area. You got to watch for the unit. The area is given a 35 centimeter square. I want to convert this to a meter square. 
and luckily in matrix system is easy, everything divided by 10, 10, 10. So maybe divided by 10,000, so they become 0.0035, or we can say same as a 0.03, no, 0, 0.35 or 35 times 10 by negative 4 meter square. Same thing. So plus, and uh, P of atmosphere was given to us as 95 kilopascal. Well, before I do that, this is a kilopascal, so I want to go ahead and these are at uh, Newton. I want to convert them to a kilopascal, so I'm going to say multiply by 1 kilopascal is same as uh, 1,000 Newton per meter square, because 1 pascal is equal Newton per meter square. Now I can go ahead plus, uh, uh, where to go, 95 kilopascal. So the answer is going to come out P, it's going to come out 147 kilopascal. Great. All right, let's, we can move to the next problem. Pressure. Uh, when we look at pressure, our atmosphere pressure, is about p is equal uh, close to 14.3 psi it could be a little bit higher or a little bit lower depending where you are and uh, uh, our pressure is on our body of 14.3 psi if we go up in a space where the pressure is zero there's nothing to compress our body there's no pressure that's why we have to use a pressure uh, suit but when you go in outside and you uh, measure the uh, pressure in your tire and that's the gauge is relative to this pressure so if i use 32 psi in my tire and uh, the actual pressure compared to the absolute pressure will be 32 uh, plus 14.3 uh, or whatever that comes out to so we always measure pressure on earth the gauge pressure is relative to uh, atmosphere pressure let's do a couple of examples right here so let's look at another example. This is just going the other way. The, the first time we had pressure above atmosphere pressure, this time it says a vacuum gauge. And that means the vacuum is anything below atmosphere pressure, whatever you are, the, your local pressure, anything below it called vacuum. And this example, the vacuum pressure, it's going to be uh, 5.8 psi. That means below the atmosphere pressure. And the local pressure, I believe, is 14.5. Uh, uh, so a local atmosphere pressure is... 14.5 psi so what is the absolute pressure the absolute pressure it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, this minus that so it's going to be uh, p is equal 14.5 minus 5.8 and that will give me uh, uh, 8.7 8.7 psi let's do one more problem let me bring it up on the board so uh, you can see it um, here it is it says uh, 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 find the atmosphere the uh, this might the atmosphere pressure at the location where the barometer reads uh, 740 millimeter uh, hydrogen and the uh, gravitational force is uh, 9.805 meter per second square and at the temperature of 10 degrees centigrade which the density of the uh, air is uh, 13570 kilogram per cubic meter all right so P atmosphere is uh, rho time G time L. We have so our P of atmosphere is equal rho, which was given to us as uh, thirteen five seven zero, and that's a kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, so now we have that, this guy in. And then we have the uh, uh, G, which is a 9.8, that's a standard, 9.8 meter per second square. And then we have, after that, we got the L, which was given at 740, uh, or let's convert them to 0.74 meter instead of a uh, uh, millimeter and I will do the conversion right away so uh, what I did basically is a 740 millimeter and that's same as a 0.74 meter 
And then we got to do a conversion. We always got to remember these two are the key right here to a lot of our conversion. Okay. And so I'm going to have, uh, I'm going to say time uh, one Newton and uh, one kilogram meter per second squared. One kilogram. We want to make sure our unit is works perfect. And uh, the marker is not working. Then we have the one kilopascal. And that's going to be 1,000 newton, newton per meter square. So when we calculate all this stuff, and our answer should come out to... Uh, Ninety-eight point five, so kilopascal. All right. Our next problem is uh, let me bring it up here, here, so we can see it. It's the uh, 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 buoy, and it's uh, has a diameter of uh, one point five meter. And the weight is about 8,500 8, Newton. And the, uh, <clears throat> find out what's the uh, force in the cable in Newton. And given the uh, uh, water is uh, 1,000. Okay, so the water is about 1,000 kilogram per uh, uh, cubic meter and the gravitational force applied. All right, so let's uh, go to work and... Uh, solve this let me bring this down so the uh, pressure the force around this buoy right here all around it it's going to be basically uh, um so the uh, f of a buoy it's going to be the weight Let's see if i can spill the right and plus the force of the cable and uh, and if we go ahead, we're looking for this. We know this, and we can calculate that. So we're going to say F of cable is equal to uh, F of B minus the weight. Basically, we can say F of cable, um, whoops, F of AB. Let's just call it F of C for now. The F of cable is equal to F of B and F of B is a uh, rho volume time g minus the weight and um, we need to invest money in some this is basically is equal rho and we have uh, the v volume of the sphere and if you look it up up on a board it's a pi d cube divided by uh, six and then we're going to have g then minus w and if we continue with that, so our FSC going to come out to rho was given as uh, 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. Okay, multiply that by rho by pi. Pi is pi. D was given as one point meter. That's cube and divided by six. And of course, our G is a nine point eight nine point eight meter per uh, second square and then we have uh, the conversion we're going to use is a one here one newton time one newton divided by uh, uh, one kilogram time meter per second squared. Now I gotta remember we see all the units gonna work out perfect kilogram and meter and everything gonna work out. So now we're gonna end up and we're gonna oh we got a W minus W and W came out to eight hundred and eighty five hundred Newton and the whole answer is gonna come out to uh, uh, eighty eight thirty six Newton. Our next problem is going to be about the temperature conversion as we have these uh, different temperature 
uh, conversion. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at it. You will like this one, because um, I do. We have this uh, uh, cake, and uh, it's in the oven at a temperature of 350 degree. It used to be a whole cake, and when it came out, I don't know what happened. Uh, somebody took a chunk out of it. It wasn't me. Uh, expressed at this temperature in Rankin, Kelvin, and uh, Celsius. So we have the formula in front of us, and let's go to work and see what we can do to uh, change those. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do, we can use this formula up here. Um, let's use this one first, TF. I'm going to go ahead and use this one right there. And that's going to be uh, um, T of R minus 459. And the temperature was given to us as... Uh, so I want to know what TR is. So I'm going to say go ahead, T of uh, R. And basically it's going to be uh, this plus that. So it's going to be uh, equal T of F plus 459.67. In this case, it's going to be uh, 350 plus uh, 459.67. So that will give me about 809.67 of Rankin. The second one we want to do is the um, T of R right here. Let's use this one. See if we can use this color, which is a 1.8 times T of Kelvin. And therefore, we can say, uh, we can say uh, T of Kelvin is equal T of R divided by 1.8. And I'm going to have 809.67 divided by 1.8. And that will give me uh, 4.4. Calvin. All right. So next one, we're going to want to know what's the T in Celsius up here. Let's do T in Celsius. Which is equal T in Kelvin minus 273. And we have T in Kelvin anyway. And that's going to be uh, T in Kelvin was 449. 449.82 uh, minus uh, 273.15 and that comes out to uh, 176.67 176.67 Celsius so that's the temperature of the oven at, uh, at Kelvin, we came out 449. At Rankin, we came 809. At Celsius, we came 176. Of course, at Fahrenheit, is 350. It is 350.